According to the Steam Hardware Survey, 5% of you gamers are still using a GTX 1060, which roughly equates to 6.6 .6 million cards in use. 2.25% still use a 1660Ti, around 3 million, and around 1% or 1.5 million use an RX 580. That is a lot of gamers using 6 or 7 year old GPUs, and AMD's RX 7600 looks like a mighty promising option that might make it worth an upgrade. Let's test them all and find out. Now seeing as 64.5% of gamers on Steam still use a 1080p monitor, I'll be testing a 1080p here. Although since 1440p monitors are getting pretty common and cheap, I'll also be running the benchmarks a 1440p. Now diving straight into the results here, starting with Cyberpunk 2077 on medium settings, if you're gaming on a GTX 1060, you aren't having the best time. It is still reasonably playable, but it is below 60 FPS, which isn't the best. The RX 580 fares a little better at only a touch below 60 FPS average, although again, this isn't the absolute best experience. The 1660 Ti does a fair bit better at 90 FPS average, and this should be a pretty good playing experience, especially with the 1% lows being over 70 FPS. This should be pretty smooth and enjoyable, although of course not quite as enjoyable as the 7600, which plows through 156 FPS average, and the 1% lows of 120. For those counting at home, that is three times the performance of both the 1060 and the 580, and not far off double the 1660 Ti. Not bad. In CSGO, ever the performant game, it just isn't phased by your low-end GPU power, with functionally identical results. Like, sure, the 1060 does offer 150 FPS less than the 7600, but at 534 FPS or 696 FPS respectively, does it really matter? The same sort of order is preserved though, with the 1060 running in last, then the 580, then the 1660 Ti, and then of course the 7600 on top. Microsoft Flight Simulator is a similar story to Cyberpunk, with the 1060 running at just 50 FPS on medium settings the 580 at 55 FPS, and the 1660 Ti at 72. Then an absolute light year ahead with the 7600 at 130. It isn't quite triple the performance of the 1060, but it isn't exactly far from it. The 1660 Ti is still a pretty decent card here though, with the, the 72 FPS average. Now in Fortnite, I should make it clear that all of the results bar the RX 580 were run in the DirectX 12 mode on the high preset with TSR on medium and the recommended setting for that. The 580 refused to run in DX12 mode as Fortnite would crash just instantly on startup, which might explain why the uh, RX 580 offers some pretty impressive results. It seems like the DirectX 12 mode hurts performance across the board here, with the 1060 suffering the most at just 40 FPS average. That means that the 7600 is over four times faster, which sounds like a pretty solid upgrade to me. The 1660Ti does run just over 60 FPS, but not by much. Hitman 3 is surprisingly close, with the 1060 actually edging out a lead over the 580 with 83 FPS average. The 518 at 78 FPS and the 1660Ti storms ahead with 118 average. All of these should be a pretty good gaming experience, although of course the 7600 is going to be a little better, especially on a high refresh rate monitor. You could also turn the settings up with the 7600 and get the same sort of performance as say the 1660Ti, but with a fair bit more visual fidelity. Lastly, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, you find again that all of these cards offer more than 60 FPS, even on the high preset. The 1060 is still last, but with a decently playable 75 FPS average. The 580 isn't that far ahead at 78, and while the uh, 1660 Ti offers a, a healthy lead at 107, 
The 7600 absolutely storms the field here with a 177 FPS average. Not too bad, eh? So just looking at the 1080p results, the 7600 is, on average, 75% faster than the 1660 Ti, 118% faster than the 580, and 160% faster than the 1060. Just from these results, I would argue that the 1660 Ti probably has some life left in it, unless you're actively noticing, you know, low FPS or tired of running on medium to low settings, you probably don't need to upgrade this just yet, at least at 1080p. The 580 and 1060 are a bit of a different story. While in some games they do manage to hit around 60 FPS, the value proposition of the 7600 seems like a worthwhile upgrade from those cards. I mean, getting over double the performance is significant, plus of course, things like a much better video encoder, including AV1 encoding, much better ray tracing performance, actually, uh, it's kind of anything is an improvement over this lot, uh, and better driver support and sort of up uh, ongoing updates too. Now things get rather interesting at 1440p, as especially the two Nvidia cards only offer 6GB of VRAM compared to 8GB on both the AMD cards. This is becoming more and more of a problem in more recent titles, and at higher resolutions, that only compounds the problem. Cyberpunk doesn't fare so well on the lower end cards, with the 1060 only netting 40 FPS average on the medium preset, and 1% lows of just 32 FPS. The 580 isn't exactly that much higher at 48 FPS average, with only the 1660 Ti breaking past the 60 FPS barrier at 67 FPS average. Of course, the 7600 has no problems and runs almost twice the performance of the 1660 Ti at 120 FPS average. The playing experience is night and day different, uh, different between the 7600 and the rest, but especially compared to the 1060. Microsoft Flight Simulator is even worse for the 1060, running at just 33 FPS average on medium. The 580, again, isn't much better at just 38. Uh, the 1660i suffers pretty heavily here at just 48 FPS average, but compare that to the 7600, which is practically soaring at nearly 90 FPS average, or again, almost triple the 1060. That is a very noticeable difference for sure. Fortnite at 1440p is a completely different experience on the 7600. Netting nearly 150 FPS average gives a smooth and enjoyable experience, even on a high refresh rate 1440p monitor. The 1660 Ti, on the other hand, only nets 56 FPS average, and the 1060 is a shocker with just 34 FPS average. While it does look like switching to the DirectX 11 mode will be a better experience, as the 580 nets more like 70 FPS, it's still lacking a fair bit in comparison. Hitman on medium settings is still remarkably playable, even on the 1060, which nets 52 FPS average. It doesn't quite hit the 60 FPS of magic number, but considering that this is a 7 year old card with 6 GB of VRAM, I'm still pretty impressed. The 580 only runs 1 FPS faster on average, while the 1660 Ti sits fairly comfortably at 77 FPS average. Naturally, the 7600 holds the top spot here with 125 FPS average. And finally, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, you can expect around 50 FPS from the 1060 and 580, a bit over 70 from the 1660 Ti, and 116 FPS average from the 7600 on the high preset. While I would prefer over 60 FPS here, I'm still pretty impressed with the performance from the older cards, including the 1060. If gaming at 1440p is on your wish list on your GTX 1066 gig, upgrading to this RX 7600 will net you 170% more performance on average. To put that another way, you will get almost three times the performance on average. 
Considering the £260 price tag on the RX 7600, at least the Sapphire model that seems to be the only one Overclocked UK you have listed right now, that seems like a fantastic deal. Hell, even at 1080p you get 160% more performance, so again, that sounds like pretty good value. The same can be said for the RX 580, with albeit a smaller advantage of just 116 to 118% more performance, aka over double, and again, that price tag seems like the right spot for that. If you've got a 1660 Ti, it might still be worth the upgrade, especially if you want to game at 1440p, as you can expect between 75 and 80% more performance. Although, in general, I would say that it still performs pretty well, especially at 1080p, and I'm not sure if the, the sort of situation is, is quite as dire as it is with the 1060 and 580. It would be really nice if you got 10 or 12 gig of VRAM with the 7600 for a bit better future proofing. I mean, the 580 has 8 gigabytes of VRAM, so that's not even an improvement there. But for the that sort of fairly budget price tag, it is somewhat hard to argue. With that said, those are my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about the 7600? And if you have one of these cards, is this something that you might actually consider upgrading to? I would love to hear your thoughts in those comments down below. Otherwise, that is kind of it. If you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notification icon. There are plenty of other videos on the end cards if you want to keep watching. And if you want to support these videos and me, you can do so through YouTube, Patreon, pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, or a load of other ones that I designed myself. Or there's also different affiliate links you can even pick up my open source response time tools at osrtt.com, that's linked in the description. And otherwise, that's kind of it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments as well. Thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next video.